Hello everyone, so I'm here today to do another video for my Read Around the World project and this time we're going to move to Africa and we're starting with North Africa so that includes Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia and Western Sahara. Um, so first of all for Algeria, um, one of my favorite books that I read recently is The Art of Losing by a lead senator who is actually French of Algerian descent so she in this book she talks about three generations the first generation is um, the one that left Algeria so her grandfather and then the second generation is her father who um, was brought to France by his parents and he feels a bit like an outsider um, and then the third generation is her generation which um, she does feel connected to Algeria but at the same time there are a lot of things that she doesn't know about the culture and she kind of goes back and tries to regain that um, that knowledge and it's written beautifully I have a full review of it so I will link it down below uh, but that's a, a really nice book that I recommend from Algeria um, then apart from that I have read a couple of books from Jasmina Kadra and honestly I haven't really liked those. Um, they are very simple writing and the characters are not very well developed so um, I don't think I will be reading anything more from Jasmina Kadra. Um, and then I have also read La Femme Sans Sepulture by Asia Jabbar um, and this was... Um, so uh, she is an activist in Algeria and um, it's some of her thoughts about it. Um, and I, I found it um, not as impactful as I was hoping for um, but yeah definitely a listener I can 100% recommend um, then for Egypt um, I have again read a few books by different authors I have read a couple of books by Nagib Mahfouz uh, who is one of the most uh, celebrated Egyptian writers but I have read them a long time ago so I I would like to read something else from him um, just because I I don't remember much of the books that I read uh, but at the same time I do have the feeling that it's not someone that I would overly enjoy just from the um, from the memories that I have from those books it's just a fairly male dominated author and I'm not always I don't always get along with that um, but one that I have read that I would recommend is The Hidden Face of Eve by Nawal El Sawadi and Nawal El Sawadi is a doctor and she is also an activist, a feminist activist in, in Egypt and in The Hidden Face of Eve she talks about feminism in Egypt, how it, it differs from uh, feminism in other places and also um, the things that she has seen as a doctor that made her even more feminist because she was a OBGYN I think so yeah that that obviously she has seen like the results of um, female circumcisions and things like that and she obviously doesn't agree with that um, and she talks about that in the book among other things and I found her writing very powerful and I really definitely want to read more from her uh, I think she's a uh, a very well deserving author of all the fame that she got. Then for Libya I have read In the Country of Maine by Hisham Matar um, and um, this is about um, a boy and his father disappears because of the regime in Libya and so he has to move away um, and then he kind of finds out more things as an adult um, and um, I liked it I think it was well written and I think it was uh, the experiences were very harrowing um, but again I don't know if it added that much to my personal um, understanding of things um, or it's just like an emotional um, response to something that I already knew was happening um, so yeah I like that book um, but yeah it, it's, it's a good book <laughs> then again for Morocco I have read quite a, a few books um, a couple of Leila Slimani books uh, I have read Lullaby and The Other Americans and I find uh, very skillful how she um, she treats things like racism in, in a literature that otherwise will be 
sold as commercial literature but it's it has that extra layer um, of uh, I don't know intelligent discussion about things and not that uh, commercial fiction cannot be intelligent but um, it's normally tends to be simplified in many aspects and I think that Leila Slimani does a good job at um, not simplifying certain topics when she's making more accessible literature let's say um, so yeah overall I, I did like her books um, I also read that the Harp and Jelum uh, book um, that is called like that uh, what's racism or something like that um, and I, th I found it very simplified I know that he is a well regarded author so maybe I should pick up something else from him that is not so focused on children um, but yeah uh, his book I found quite simply simplified um, and then one that I really enjoyed as well is uh, Siempre han hablado por nosotras by Najat Al Hadmi and, and she's uh, a feminist activist um, that grew up in Spain uh, but she's from a Moroccan origin and she was born in Morocco uh, and the book is written in Spanish so I don't think it's translated but it translates the, the title translates to something like they have always spoken for us from us or for us um, and it basically talks about how um, how feminism is in Morocco in, in particular and how she's thankful that she got um, some knowledge about feminism in Spain that informed her feminism in in her own culture um, and she also criticized the fact that uh, often uh, when we talk especially about feminism we are very hesitant in the West to address um, Islamic countries with it because obviously the culture is very different and the um, we perceive as like the fact for example that women wear hijab and stuff like that it's very embedded in their in their religion and their culture and um, criticizing that will be criticizing their culture and we don't want to do that um, but she does say that she her western um, education allows her to see what's wrong with that and denounce it and she wishes that uh, we will be a little bit more um, aware that we are allowed to criticize certain aspects of a culture if they are reducing the um, the liberties and the the rights of people um, and that was a very interesting discussion so I would recommend that if you speak Spanish uh, unfortunately I don't think it's translated to other languages but um, it is a good read. And for Tunisia I read The Ardent Swarm by Jemaine Monai and this was kind of a satirical um, story about um, different people in rural Tunisia and there is uh, two men that were friends from um, young age and one of them is a beekeeper and the other one um, is kind of um, go struggling with his life so he ends up uh, joining um, I don't know if it's ISIS but um, a terrorist group um, radical Islam group um, and his friend the beekeeper is not very happy with that because he he doesn't agree with violence like that um, and so you you see the the different difficulties that they have and then at the same time his bees are dying because of um, certain uh, natural effects that are happening and he's trying to recover them um, but because he, they live in a controlled area by the radical Islamists, the radical Islamists don't believe in science, let's say. So uh, he doesn't have the, the power to do anything about it. But then there is this professor that helps him. Um, and it's very satirical. It's, uh, it was fun. Um, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I would recommend as well. And then the last book that I want to talk about today is Endgame in, in Western Sahara by Toby Shelley. Now, this is for Western Sahara, but the author is not a Saharawi. Um, but I couldn't find anything that was from a Saharawi author. I really looked and I couldn't find. If you know any Saharawi author, uh, let me know. But this book basically, um, it's focusing on obviously the... Um, 
the situation in Western Sahara, which is not uh, formally recognized as a country, it's formally recognized as part of Morocco, um, but they are, um, yeah, they, they want independence, um, but there are many forces pulling from <laughs> all places uh, from different directions. So there is, it used to be a Spanish colony, um, so Spain has interest in it, uh, Morocco has interest in it, obviously. Um, Algeria has a small border with it and that is making them claim that they also have opinions about it and um, I didn't know but apparently Algeria is very uh, for the independence of uh, Western Sahara and they have been funding different uh, rebels and they have also been trying to help them reframe their um, their quests and their um, their petitions in a way that makes it more relatable and understandable to other countries and cultures um, and um, apparently nobody is sure exactly what they are trying to do but most people seem to think that they're just trying to reduce Moroccan's um, power um, because Western Sahara apparently has a lot of natural resources so that will limit Moroccan's power and then Algeria can be the bigger country in the area um, and then Mauritania also is part of that that uh, collection of countries that have interest in Western Sahara so this book really goes into what each of them are trying to do and what each of them are trying to um, achieve with with their presence in Western Sahara um, and also the life of the Sahara with um, as it is um, and it does I, I again I didn't know this but it the author often compares the situation with uh, the situation in East Timor apparently they are quite similar in many ways and East Timor now is a an independent country from Indonesia and uh, the author seems to hope that that will happen for Western Sahara at some point, but uh, as of yet it has not happened. Um, the only thing I will say is that this book was written in 2004, so a lot of things feel a little bit outdated or like... It, there, there is a lot of um, discussion of the events and the events stop around the 2000s and I would have liked to know what happens in the last 20 years which obviously this book cannot cover because it was written before that but um, it would have been nice to see and I, I'm willing to research things like that now um, that I have a little bit more of a base so I think it was a good book to give me a base on what which I can uh, build up my knowledge about Western Sahara. Um, so yeah, those are all the books that I read for North Africa. Uh, let me know if you have read any of these, if you have any other recommendations and until next video, bye!